Hello, today we have Panish Sharma, president and CEO of Lantern Pharma, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker LTRN. Pana, welcome to the show. Craig, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Pana, your AI platform is called Radar. It is already huge. It's got 200 billion oncology data points, and it is growing month by month. In what specific ways do you anticipate that Radar will alter the company's approach to identifying and advancing new drug candidates in the coming year? Yeah, I think more than altering, I think it's going to reinforce our existing approach, which is we're a data-driven company. We have a data-driven approach to drug development. The more data we have, both from studies outside that we're doing, as well as our own laboratories that we work with, as well as our own clinical trials, it advances ideas to come up with new indications. And as a company, we're going after very unusual indications, indications where there's no approved therapy, indications where we can get orphan status. So it, it'll accelerate those. And that means, of course, new IP. It also means that we can uncover new combinations, which has been actually one of the most important things in the development of our platform is uncovering combinations. How does our drug in combination with other approved therapies, improve the potential survival of a patient. And also, as we generate new combinations and new indications, it allows us to partner those out with pharma. So we end up with a much larger portfolio that can be partnered out. And so for investors, that means more shots on goal, ultimately. And the faster you generate new combinations, new indications, and you prove those out, that really then all that data feeds back into the platform. And so as the platform grows, it grows our ability to generate value generation events for our investors. Pana, what I want to know is, how has Radar enabled Lantern to grow from three programs at IPO in 2021 to 12 today? And which platform enhancements or process changes were most critical to that expansion? Yeah, I think the... You know, touching on enhancements, it really has been about enhancements. Those enhancements mostly have been in the area of the functional enhancements of the platform, new capabilities, things that we weren't doing. But also the process changes have been mostly focused on automation. Things that our team was doing manually are now done in an automated way by the platform itself, like gathering new data, curating data, generating meta tags for data, learning from existing literature. So all that is now automated. So the platform actually has its own kind of rhythm, its own livability in a sense. But beyond the process changes, let me tell you some specifics in terms of the functionality. And that's really quite fascinating is the platform is really focused on understanding how a molecule can work or not work in cancer, not only in solid tumors, but also in blood cancers. And so that really is the core of our engine. But we also enhanced it. We were able to enhance our platform to help us develop new molecules by understanding their binding properties, develop new molecules by doing molecular optimization across thousands and thousands of parameters of certain types of molecules. And those were capabilities we did not have when we went public. And so one of the most important things about any platform is to have a roadmap. And our roadmap, and I think we've, we're achieving this now, is ultimately to have the world's largest and most potent oncology drug development AI platform. And that's allowed us to generate totally new molecules, first in human molecules like our LP284 drug for B cell lymphomas. It's also allowed us to generate totally new antibody drug conjugates, which have never been generated before. So we've been able to generate new molecules, find new indications, and very importantly, all the data that we're getting now from our studies all the data we're getting from our collaborators and data from trials all feeds back into the platform. So the platform every month or every time there's new data ingestion generates new capabilities. And so more than anything in terms of what enhancements, the enhancements really have been lots of additional functionality. Functionality to define combinations, functionality to uncover the core pharmacological agent or engine involved in transforming 
a cancer or attacking a cancer, generating totally new combinations of drugs. And so I expect these to only accelerate. But most importantly, what I'm very excited about is the platform itself is now learning. And so one of the interesting patents that we generated is a patent that's called a meta learner patent, where a meta learner sits on top of the platform and learns what is the platform doing best and then generates new algorithms based on the best performing algorithm. And so that gives a certain level of, I would say, awareness to the platform. And there's probably going to be even more and more layers of awareness for the platform independent of our own involvement can start recursing itself and improving itself. And ultimately, that's going to be really phenomenal for areas like drug discovery. Now, Pana, speaking of clinical trials and combinations with pre-existing therapies, I believe you recently reported some data on LP300. Could you elaborate? Absolutely. So LP300 has been put into a phase two trial. And we had a very remarkable response with the patient. Now, ultimately, you know, I want to, of course, thank the patient and the patient's family. It takes a lot of courage to enroll into a clinical trial, you know, for an experimental drug candidate. Um, so first, for every biotech CEO, we should always think about the patients and what they undergo in the process. We were very fortunate, and also the patient, they had a uh, fairly durable, complete response in their primary cancer lesions meaning that their primary tumor, which was lung cancer, and also it had spread to the adrenal gland, um, was completely gone. And so we initially had reported this as a partial response back last year. And as the trial matured, it uh, accelerated to a complete response, which is really fantastic. Um, the patient uh, subsequently had done so well, they actually decided to come off the trial. Well, wow. So, you know, again... Patients first. I think the patient and their family has tremendous courage to enroll. Um, we're glad to see this kind of result, typically in people who are never smokers. And for this kind of patient where this was a third or fourth line treatment, it's really unusual to see a complete durable response of more than two years. And so this gives us a lot of excitement about how we can think about the responses in this trial, because we're seeing other responses. We had an 86% clinical benefit rate in the first readout for LP300. We've expanded it now to Japan and Taiwan. We're never smoking, and people who are never smokers that come down with non small cell lung cancer is about two to two and a half times the rate of the United States. It's a large population. We anticipate there's about four to five billion dollars spent annually trying to treat never smokers. And ironically, never smokers actually end up oftentimes doing much worse than smokers because there is no real um, targeted therapy. Once they fail kinase drug, which is about almost all, all the time, you eventually will fail kinase drugs, then that's a great role for LP300. And we've seen that so far. Again, I point to our 86% clinical benefit rate, I point to this wonderful complete response that we've had this in this patient, complete response in the primary lesions. And we're seeing also other patients that are seeing good ongoing benefit from the drug. Um, there's no drug approved for never smokers. So we think we can probably aim for an accelerated approval um, on the path towards an approval. And we hope to partner out this drug with larger pharma, either geographically um, in certain geographies like Asia or Europe. Um, or even globally. So again, I think the biggest thing is that the patient had the courage to enter into the trial. We've seen wonderful benefit in the patient. There's no approved therapy in this population, but 4 to $5 billion annually spent uh, for this population. And we think we're on, on the path towards uh, a meaningful readout. That is just great, Pana. Fabulous results. Now, turning to the total addressable market, what is that market for Lantern's lead indications, and how do the Lantern's core business model capture value across discovery services, partnerships, and eventual product commercialization? Yeah, that's a, yeah, something, you know, ultimately, you know, in the business of biotech, you do have to care about the addressable populations. And, you know, we, first of all, our primary focus is always to think about 
is the molecule meaningful? Does it have a meaningful impact on the disease that we want to try to solve for? And then, of course, think about what's an addressable market. And then think about how do we expand that addressable market, which is really important. Um, but we see that our indications that we're going after for LP300, LP184, LP284, those are the drugs that are in clinical stages today. The indications for those three drugs alone exceeds $22 billion. So there's a lot of addressable market for those, for those populations, and many of those are in diseases that are rare. Some are orphaned, and so we even have additional commercial protection. LP184 is a very unique molecule because it works across a lot of different solid tumors. And similar, LP284 today uh, works very well in a couple of very targeted B-cell lymphomas. Um, so, yeah, we're very fortunate to have some very meaningful and very large addressable markets for our drugs. But we also have some new drugs in the preclinical pipeline that we haven't even talked about. And, but that'll be more for next year's story. And those are also some large populations as well. Pana, that's very exciting. And I can't wait to hear more about your results in the coming months. Now, your company has already achieved a number of important FDA designations such as Orphan Drug and Fast Track. How has your team achieved so many? Would you like to elaborate on that, please? Yeah. So one of the, this is actually really a great testament to the power of the AI platform and indications, is that many of the indications that we have, we have 11 indications. So that's almost one for every two employees. That's a very wow. remarkable ratio, yeah. Um, so great work on the hands of the team to not only find and uncover these indications, but then to get, to get the various designations. Just for the audience, we have five orphan designations. Uh, we have four rare pediatric disease designations, and we have two fast-track designations. The fast-track designations are in triple negative breast cancer and in glioblastoma. The rare pediatric designations, if we get approval in any one of those, that can give us a priority review voucher, which then we can sell for a, about $100 to $150 million. So just those four priority review vouchers can be worth 20 times our current market value. Um, so they're very important. And the reason we're able to get those designations, including the orphan designations, of which we have five, uh, orphan designations are important because they allow you to get more one-on-one -on -one time with the FDA. They give you many years of additional commercial IP protection, and they also relieve you of some of the filing fees. So all of these designations have lots of uh, importance. And part of the thing we always think about is, is there a cancer that our drug can work better in? Is there a subtype of disease? So if the drug looks like it simply works in DNA damage repair deficient cancers, what other pathways, what other genes can we go after that maybe give us a more remarkable, a more durable? Then we think about, are there cancers that have no drugs approved where we can exploit this mechanism? So there's always the constant thinking about, like, where can we use this molecule better? Where can we use it further? Where can we push it to where there's a huge unmet need? And I think that's a great testament to the team. And also, it shows how we're using data to generate ideas and then validate ideas quickly. Pana, it's a cliche, but we've got to ask it. Management, critical to any company, and especially a small cap company. Introduce us to your team, please. Yeah, we're a small uh, company, so every, every person counts. You know, every person is wearing multiple hats in our company. Our CFO does a lot of operational activity. Uh, he's been heavily involved in a lot of our IP and legal work as well, you know, as a trained lawyer. So, yeah, every member of our team, our CFO was president of a, of a um, cancer pharma company in the past. Our chief scientific officer was at the NCI and uh, also um, uh, head of cancer research um, in multiple hospitals in the past. Um, our head of platform development was at the Broad Institute. Our chief medical officer was the head of neuro-oncology and neuro-oncology programs at multiple institutions. They are, everyone's got a wonderful background, but the key to them is that they're all really hands-on, roll up the sleeves, wear multiple hats. And that's the ethos of our company. You know, we want to make drugs faster. We want to make drugs with less expense 
and we want to make drugs that really can make a difference in meaningful cancers quickly. So that's what really drives the ethos of the company is to use data, not because we want to use AI, but we want to use the power of this technology to transform the cost of developing cancer medicines. It shouldn't cost billions of dollars to develop every indication. And so our team is please rolled up, hands on, wear multiple hats. And uh, that's a great testament to the kind of people that, that are working at Lantern across the board. Final question, Fauna, the essential value proposition. Tell us why investors should be focusing on Lantern today. And please focus on any near-term catalysts that might be coming. Yeah, it's a, a wonderful question. So this, over the next 12 months is a really important time. We've got data coming out for across all of our existing clinical trials. LP184 will complete enrollment in the coming months and we'll have data later this year. LP284 will have some data this year, LP300. And so all of our trials will have readouts. Um, and since they're open label, we may also have some really great stories about individual responses or groups of patients as well to share. Um, but in addition to the readouts from our existing clinical trials, we also will have some very exciting news on the AI platform. So the AI platform radar, we plan on uh, making available portions of the platform publicly. And so we'll be releasing many open source modules of our AI platform out to the public. Uh, modules such as being able to predict the blood brain barrier, modules to help with the development of rare diseases, rare, rare cancers, modules to help with understanding antibody drug conjugate design, modules to look at the interpretation of liquid biopsy in the presence of certain clinical trials. So these are all tools that we've been using internally, and they've accelerated our drug development and for some of our partners as well. But now we're going to transform that and really change the space of oncology drug development by releasing them out to the public. And so that's a very exciting time. So that's going to happen uh, starting uh, this quarter. And we'll be rolling out modules over the course of the next several, several quarters. So our trials will continue. We'll have readouts in our trials, but also our AI platform will be unveiled and opened up. So we expect both fronts to have meaningful progress through the year. Pana, great to have you in Orlando studios and thanks for coming down. Oh, thank you, Craig.